Hey guys, Sleet here again with another video. Um, today we're going to be talking a little bit about Axie stats. So if we take a look at any Axie, say this guy, you'll see that there's four stats associated with it. Health, speed, skill, and morale. So let's take a look at what each of these stats will contribute towards the gameplay of the actual Axie itself. How is HP calculated? You see that there's a base stat line and what it equates to in an actual fight is that it's, it's HP stat times six plus 150. So every HP stat essentially is equivalent to six HP. Uh, what is the range of HPs you want when selecting a particular Axie? Um, this is also the base stats of each body this is also very important, especially for breeders, because a lot of breeders will choose bodies with, as uh, the meta dictates right now, mostly bodies with high HP and speed. So which ones fall under that category? Aquas and Dusks. These are the two most popular classes, I would say, in the current meta. And the reason for that being is that they both have a lot of HP and speed. So speed also somewhat intuitive to understand. So obviously axes that have different amount of speeds, the one that has higher speed will go first. Now, what if they have the same speed? Then there's a couple tiebreakers that you have to go through. So this is essentially the order in which tiebreakers are resolved. So given that your axe has the exact same speed as the opponent, then it goes to HP. So which one has the lower HP amount will then go first. If they tie on that, then it goes to the skill. And if that's also still tied, then it goes to morale. And if that's also tied, then it goes to lower axe ID. When will you actually go to lower axe ID? Essentially, this situation occurs most with birds. So birds tend to be pure. And because they have all the same body parts, um, all bird parts, they will essentially be tying in all of the HP, skill, and morale, and then it comes down to the bird ID. This also makes it so that if you have a lower ID and then you use all out shot, that modifies your HP, so keep that those things in mind. Um, this also means that if you have a bird, uh, if you have an aqua eye or ear on your bird instead of a bird eye and ear, that's also detrimental to the speed tie because now your bird will have more HP. Body part stats add, the aquatic body part actually adds one HP and the bird part does not add any HP. So what that ends up equating to is that if you have an aqua bird eye or ear, it actually makes your axle slower in the speed tie if you were to have, say, a uh, bird with an aqua eye or ear, it will have more HP. So after the speed is all done, let's talk about skill. So skill is oftentimes kind of a meme. Now, it's just pretty much axes with higher skill stat will do more damage than comboing. So what does this word comboing mean? Comboing means when you use two or more cards on a single axe. So if a single axe uses two or more cards, you know, each skill stat is equivalent to 0.2% damage. So if you were to break down this formula, this is real, uh, if you like do some distributive property, you could just rearrange it to be like this because these are both numerators, yeah? So you have your card attack, so you have your skill amount divided by 500. And if you know what defining by 500 is, for each skill point you have, it's essentially 0.2%. So let's take a look at the skill amounts. The only skill that's actually really high is mech. And mechs actually do very similar damage to beasts because of the skill differential. But other than that, like this stat is pretty much not negligible. The other thing is that no single body part gives the skill stat as well. So you can just refer to the base body when you're determining what, uh, if you want to know what the skill stat is. So the, the, the particular ratios, um, mech has the highest skill. And then the rest of them are just around like 30s. Nothing really uh, exciting there. Okay, now morale. Morale is actually pretty interesting in multiple ways. So how the game describes it as is that axes with higher morale have a greater chance of landing critical hits. I don't have the statistics to back this up. 
and confirmation bias feels like lower morale axes crit more but it's probably over a large sample size the formula might flesh itself better but i, I do not believe there's any information on morale versus crits the other thing that is more interesting is how it interacts with last stand so more morale will not only give you more last stand bars but also it allows you to enter last stand easier so let's actually give an example so this morale modifier essentially tells you whether an axie will enter last stand or not entering last stand is not random it is completely deterministic so if you're like oh why did this axie enter last stand like this guy's so lucky it's actually because it no it will always enter last stand if it were to enter last stand and if something dies cleanly it will always die cleanly the only thing that can change that is that if you're planning for your axie to enter last stand and then they crit which throws off the excess damage by a lot yeah so let's actually give an example of this let's actually use oranda okay so oranda against an aqua for instance so oranda against the aqua does 140 damage yeah and so this will do and let's just say that your aqua is at different hps we can calculate will it enter last stand at 100 hp 110 HP, 120, 120 HP. But just to make things a little bit more simple, let's just say your uh, Axie had 130 HP. And then let's do another example of your Aqua at 100 HP. Okay. So how much morale do Aquas have? They have 27. And if it's a pure Aqua without any bird parts or any bug parts or anything else, it'll still be 27 because no Aqua parts add morale. They add HP and speed right so unless it has one of the impurities that increase the morale it'll be at 27 morale so let's just say that an enemy opponent uses oranda 140 damage will you last stand if your axe is at 130 hp let's take a look so what is the excess damage the excess damage is for this example is 10 hp yeah it does 140 and you have 130 HP, it overkills you by 10 HP. Now let's take a look at how the morale modifier works. So the morale modifier is your Axie's remaining HP, 130, times its morale, which is 27, divided by 100. Now what does this value equate to? So if you multiply this all out and then do the whole formula, that means that your morale modifier is 35.1. And numbers always round down in Axie, so this means that enemy must overkill you by 35 HP or more in order for you to not last stand. Okay. So, that means that any single move has to do 165, 166 damage in order to kill you. Let's use a different example though. Cause this one, it looks like a barely overkill because it's 10 HP, but uh, let, let's do the next example first. Let's do the next example first. So let's do the 100 example, yeah. So same idea. So the excess in this particular case is now 40 damage, right? 40 damage. Now we have the same formula And then we have to change this number, but this will now be 27. So this number is now that you have 27. They have to kill you by 27, but the excess is actually 40. So now the enemy will kill you. This will be a clean kill, right? So at 100 HP, you're not going to enter last stand. So there's two things in mind. You have to account for the amount that you're overkilling by, and you have to account for how much HP you are remaining. Let's also do another example. Let's just say that you have 15 HP left, and a move does 20 damage, yeah? Because this looks like it barely overkills you a lot of the time. So what this is gonna be now is that let's just say let's use the aqua example again so the overkill 
is five damage. Good. Times your morale modifier is four. So this actually, this actually is on the cusp. If it does 21 damage, it would actually kill you. So if it was, if it was just 20 damage, you'd actually enter last stand. But at 21 damage, you're now overkilling them more than the morale modifier amount. So that's just some things to keep in mind. So the closer you are to zero HP, the harder it is to enter last stand, mostly because the remaining HP portion is going to be a smaller amount multiplying by the morale. So it is harder and harder and harder to enter last stand as you get closer and closer and closer to zero HP. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully that, that made a little bit of sense. Other things that I think that are important to know are essentially the breakpoints for morale. So this is information that is gathered by me, meat value, and ADR, uh, ADRD uh, hots. So unfortunately, we don't have the data exactly for four bars of morale, but these are the breakpoints that we found for two, three, and five uh, bars. Now. Most of the time, no one really cares about two bars, but let me show you an example of why three bars of morale might be interesting, okay? So let's actually go into this one game. So I, I played a couple games with this one, okay? Now, this one probably caught him very off guard because my bug has 48, or my bug, my plant has 48 morale. So this guy has three bars of morale. So let's just skip ahead until we get to the portion where um, this becomes very relevant. So early game, not too much happening. Okay. Okay, so I believe this is the particular turn in which it happens. So here, I was expecting a fairly big attack. Oh, was it this turn? No, it wasn't this turn. Sorry, I was just gonna go for attack here and I'm, I'm at some, some amount of HP. Okay. And this dies. Okay. So here, it is very common that people will do like a Nemo goldfish or something, right? Nemo go goldfish does about 100, uh, 140 damage. So if I play like a hot butt right here, that gives me effectively 130-ish HP after the stat bonus. This is 55, right? 131 HP. So the overkill by a Nemo goldfish is not too much. Look what happens with the three bars of morale, okay? So I play the one hot butt. So I'm forcing this guy to enter uh, last stand. And this guy essentially spends all the cards on this, right? If you enforce yourself into last stand, essentially it makes them waste a lot of cards. So that's like one prime example where using last stand to your uh, using the last stand and how to enter it to your knowledge is really important because most of the time you most people don't play a card there right you're using one energy you're using one energy to kind of like make them waste more energy on their backliner for instance so let's take a look at another example so nothing of substance happens for a little bit okay so in this particular case here it's pretty i, I was just kind of letting this guy be sacked for instance so I didn't expect anything crazy, but take a look at what three bars of last stand does. Because normally speaking, the Nemo can clear out a last stand and then your plant dies because it's at two bars. But take a look at what happens when you have three bars. Yeah. So the Nemo doesn't clear it and then the Piranha gets stuck on the front line, right? This guy didn't take any damage. This is another reason why three bars is actually really interesting. Another thing that could have happened is say he didn't play a card on this guy. I could have played a hot butt and I still have one bar, right? So you can actually get in an extra attack or essentially block an extra attack by having the third bar of last stand. So very, very interesting utility with three bars. I don't know when it'll come into the meta, but it, it's, it's definitely some thoughts that you can play around, but you have to know your damage timings and how to enter last stand very well in order to uh, Use it effectively. I wouldn't say that you need to have three bars of last stand. And let's take a look at this particular uh, example as well. So uh, I would say this one is also a very similar case of this. Um, okay, it's this turn right here. 
So you can see I played one card again just for that. I, I feel like the damage break points work better, but I was also just kind of going for a hop up. But look at how much he played here, right? Let's take a look at what happens. So he tacks through. So this might be an ordering difference. Like Piranha would have made a huge difference here because that would actually have overkilled him. But now it tanked all of these hits and I get off that hot butt, right? It gets that one bar of last stand. So again, this ordering, if he swapped the Crimson Water with his uh, one of the Anemones, that would actually be a clean kill instead of actually making me enter last stand. So another reason why ordering your damage cards in the right order, oh, that was kind of really redundant, but why ordering your cards in the uh, in the correct order is actually quite important too. Uh, being able to get certain things off or making uh, certain axes enter last stand or not enter last stand. We figured out that 85 morale is for five bars, like very, very randomly, because I have a reptile. This one right here has a 84 morale in adventure. So we enter, uh, we tested in adventure. This guy has four bars in adventure mode. And then ADRS sent me this screenshot of a pure beast with uh, two plus morale. So a pure beast will have 61 morale. Okay, so 61 morale times 1.4. And remember numbers round down. So this one has 85 morale in this screenshot. And has five bars so that that's how we figured out that that breakpoint is at 85 for five bars but for four bars we don't know what this is yet but i don't know how applicable this will be i don't know how useful this will be either but i would say that for three bars there is some real usage for three bars right now in the current meta and but by battles v2 maybe this will all change but yeah 61 yeah okay just some other tidbits of information notice again that each base part of each axie gives different stats. Um, none of them give skill as noticed here, but essentially the ones that are really important are like the plant parts that give a plant and reptile parts, which give a lot of HP, the aqua and bird parts, which give a lot of speed, and then beast and bug kind of get owned. So these two morale stat is not that important, but if you're going for a DPS plant, you might want to actually go for max HP and try to hit that 48 morale breakpoint. Because when you're using bug beast parts, your morale actually goes pretty high. And uh, plant itself also has a high base morale as a body. So that might be some things to look out for in the future. But other than that, I think that really sums it up for Axie stats. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that and I'll catch you on the next one.